Hey guys, this is Steggy from MLG Pro, giving you the full review of the Astro A30 audio system. The Astro A30 is the latest headset from Astro Gaming, who has brought you the Astro A40, the official licensed headset of MLG. The Astro A30 is designed for gamers on the go who want to gain the competitive edge no matter where they are. The Astro A30 sells for $150, while the A30 audio system, which includes the Astro Mix Amp, is priced at $230. Looking at the design, you can see a lot of changes that Astro has made with the Astro A30. Number one is the sheer size. The Astro A30 is about half the size of the A40. It honestly feels tiny in my hands. The A30 is also a closed, super aural headset as opposed to the A40's circumaural open headset. The mic design is also changed. While the Astro A40 has the option of having your boom mic on either side, the A30 mic port is at a fixed location on the headset. But the Astro A30 also has an inline microphone built right into the cord. So if you are an iPhone, Droid, or Blackberry Storm owner, you can use this headset as a headphone when you're out and about, and if you get a call, you can segue right into it with the inline microphone and multifunction button on the A30's quick disconnect cord. The Astro A40 system had a lot of features, and Astro has packed even more into the A30. But what Astro also focused on with the A30 was sound. Astro wanted this headset to be your go-to headset for music, phone calls, gaming, and movies, and they try to incorporate a balanced sound in the headset to achieve all of those. As far as comfort goes, for a super oral headset, the A30 is super comfortable. The material used for the ear pads is as soft and plush as the ear pads of the Audio-Technica 8700. I would still say I prefer the circumaural fit of the A40s, but only because they are kinder to me on hotter days than the A30s are. But the A30s are super comfortable, don't get me wrong. For build quality, the A30's build quality seems to be improved since the A40. The plastic body is tough hard plastic, and Astro has forgone the exposed cable and coiled cable design. Instead, you have a clicking adjusting system like Sennheiser's. So far what I can accumulate from the A30 headset is that it has proven to be comfortable and built durable. But what about the microphone? This is the A30's weak spot. Because of the positioning of the microphone, your voice is easily distorted, either by it being too close and the mic becomes blown out when you speak and it can pick up your breathing at your nose, or it is too far away not picking up all of your voice. You really have to spend some time getting it into a sweet spot so you don't have the blown out sound but still come in clearly and consistently. What's weaker than the A30's boom microphone is its inline microphone. It picks up noises from it rubbing against my shirt easily, but my voice, not so much. Playing back recordings of me talking through it on the computer and Xbox Live, it makes me sound like I have a lisp and that I'm 14 years old. One of the problems is that the quick disconnect puck is connected to the A30 in a way, so the microphone is facing directly inwards and touching my shirt, making the responsiveness weak. If you try twisting it into a proper position, it just goes right back to it because that's its natural position. But not all hope is lost for the microphones. With the A40 headset, because of where the microphone port was located, the only microphone that could really be compatible with the headset was the Astro microphone. But because of the A30's mic port location, you could kind of choose your own mic a la carte. One of the microphones I had in mind was a GE microphone that's available with a detachable microphone headset. You could just take it off of that $10 headset and plug it into the A30's and you can be all set. Now one of the most important aspects of the headset, the sound. Like I mentioned in my mini review of the headset, Astro has delivered what was promised. The low end has definitely been improved coming from the A40s to the A30s. The low end is pretty clean as far as the oomph of the bass goes. I put it in between the 8700 and the HD 595. It's definitely a big improvement over the A40. For the other parts of the audio spectrum, I still find the highs to be somewhat veiled. The A30s have remained to not pick up on some of the subtle details in the highs in some of the tracks that I listen to. One example would be the background synthesizer and the chorus of Fireflies by Owl City. But additions like those in tracks are very subtle, so I don't want you thinking it's a lot worse than it actually is, because the sound clarity is quite nice, it just has its flaws, like every other headphone and headset out there. But you'll like this headset if you listen to rock or rap. The tracks were full of life with the guitars when listening to A Day to Remember, and the bass was definitely thumping when playing Flowbots and Kesha. Yeah, I listen to Kesha. It's like Astro says, it's a good all-around headset and headphone with its balanced sound. But now let's get into gaming. Like I said in my mini-review, I believe that the best kinds of headsets for gaming are those with a full range of sound. 
Some people argue that a weakness like light bass is good for gaming because there would be less drowning out or booming from the lower registry explosions can allow you to hear the higher registries like gunfire or footsteps. My point of view is that you never know when you're going to need to hear a sound in lower registries or any registry for that matter. If you have a headset that is really weak in certain areas, well if you're in a situation when you need to hear those areas, then you're up shit's creek without a paddle. Anyways, I'm totally satisfied with the A30s for gaming. The super oral closed design allows you to block out a lot of ambient noise, but doesn't quite give you the seal like earphones or the Sennheiser PC350s do, so you won't have the plugged in feeling when you speak. The balanced sound makes for a good immersive experience without anything being totally overpowering. Footsteps were clear as a bell and positioning was very easy thanks to both the A30 headset and the Astro mix amp. What I really like about the A30 and A40 audio systems is just the package deal you get. I'm not going to lie that the price of the complete system is far from cheap, but you are really given quite a nice setup. Right when you open up your shipping box, it's like you've been invited to the Centurion Club. They take a lot of care in the packaging and documentation, and just everything you get with it. With the Astro A30 headset, you get multiple accessories included. One is speaker tags. While these are just a cosmetic feature, so I'm not going to go into a full rant about them like other reviewers might, but I will admit that it is kind of a nice way to personalize your headset and make it truly your own. And it isn't such a bad idea if you have 20 guys with Astros at a LAN. Personalized speaker tags makes life a little bit easier. You also get a hard cloth shell travel case for your Astros. With the headsets that are released that are detachable or foldable, all for the ease of travel, I would much rather have it include a travel case instead, since you can always fit all the accessories in with it. I just think it's a really handy feature. Then with the A30s, you get three different types of quick disconnect cables. There's one for the Astro mix amp, one with a multi-function button for use with your smartphone, and one that is meant for normal PC stereo connection. All of these fit into the travel case and you're ready to travel with them. And while the A40 isn't exactly my highest rated headset, the mix amp in my mind has always been a winner. The mix amp gives you the ability to balance game and chat volume when gaming, so gameplay will never drown out your teammates again. And the mix amp of course provides you with Dolby Headphone Virtual 5.1, which gives you the directional positioning of 5.1 while still keeping the clarity you get from stereo headphone. Plus, without the Astro mix amp, none of the popular PC headsets would be usable at MLG events to this day, so you have to give them props for that. Now, besides the microphone, there are still a few gripes I have about the Astro A30 headset. One of the things I would like to see at some point with the Astro systems would be an included optical cable. While headsets like the Triton AX720 and the Turtle Beach X41 include an optical cable with their systems, Astro provides these optionally at an additional charge. I will admit that the cable that they have is very nicely made. It has a nylon braided sleeving with sturdy jacks on the end and is really nice, but a one cent rail thin optical cable will offer the same audio quality as the nylon braided $20 cable. Having it included would just be nice, since so many people ask themselves the question, do I need this because it's under the optional accessories. My other problem with the Astro A30 is actually with the system rather than the headset. The Astro A40 retails for $200 on its own and $250 with the Astro mix amp. The Astro A30 retails for $150 on its own, yet it retails for $230 with the Astro mix amp. I just ask myself, why wouldn't I be able to get as good of a deal with the Astro A30 system as I can with the A40 system? My initial thoughts are either one, Astro is targeting customers who already own the A40 with the mix amp and kind of want to convince them to get that system before they get the additional A30. And the other would be possibly the markup on the A30 isn't as much as the A40, so there isn't as much wiggle room for saving money when you get the system. I believe it's just the former, but still, I'm sure a lot of people would be a lot more likely to pull the trigger on the system if it was $200 versus $230. But all in all, I have to say, I think that the A30 is a big improvement over the A40 audio system, and with its fuller range of sound, I'd peg the A30 above the Sennheiser PC350. While you end up getting more of a deal with the A40 system package, think about the particular uses you have for the headset, and if versatility is something you're looking for, then you might want to take a look at the Astro A30 audio system. It still has its kinks that need to be hammered out eventually, but all in all, I consider the A30 a solid purchase. So this is Steggy with the review of the Astro A30 headset. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And check out my YouTube channel for more reviews and unboxings of headsets and more. And be sure to check MLGPro.com for the written reviews. So, once again, this is Steggy. Thank you guys for watching.